With everybody already having amateur extra and generals and such an advanced crowd, how many of you have not done anything with 13 colonies in the past? More than I would expect, okay. Um, even if you have, I think you'll get something out of the conversation tonight, because I'm not really just gonna give you an intro to 13 colonies. I will do that, but I'm also gonna tell you about our journey, what Laura and I have done. Uh, we didn't just view it as trying to get the the 13 colonies, you know, make contact with them, and then the two bonus stations. We really looked at it as a test because there's a variety of different stations. Some are close to us because George is one of the original 13 colonies. Others are a little bit farther away, and then you got a bonus station over in England. So it takes different type of um, contact. Okay, it's, it's a little bit challenging. Uh, we'll talk about uh, some skills development. One of the things that I learned the first time I did it was that I didn't know how to make all the contacts. And when I, I was trying to do it, I was really having to kind of feel my way through and learn. So before I did the next one, I, I went through and kind of did a lessons learned. Here's what I need to improve on. There's some spotting tools, equipment. We had to upgrade some equipment at our place. Uh, I got my amateur extra to get access to some of the, the stations. They were operating in the, the lower part of the band. Uh, some of them operate split. If you don't know what that is, I'll talk, talk about that in just a minute. And then just learning how to listen and learning how to make the contact because you're trying to contact the station at the same time a thousand other people are. So it's a, it's a big pile up for a lot of these stations. Uh, what is the event? So there's special events going on with amateur radio every single day of the year. This is a, a pretty big one. They have, uh, several thousand people that participate. I think they handed out over 10,000 uh, cards this year. And what you're doing, you're making contact with each of the st a special event station in each of the 13 states that were part of the, the original 13 colonies for the US. There's a bonus station in Pennsylvania and a bonus station in England. So for the 13 states, they might be operating multiple bands at the same time they might be operating multiple modes. So they might be operating CW on 20 and PSK on 40 and voice on 80. So in Georgia, I wasn't able to get them on 40 meters. I'm shooting right over the top of them. They were down around Athens. I got them on 80. I waited and I, I used a spotting tool to figure out where they were. And the first year we did it, um, I had just gotten my general Hadn't even gotten an antenna hooked up to the radio yet. Felton kept pestering me. Finally just said, I'm coming over to your house. And uh, he brought, uh, I was like, I don't think my coax is long enough. He brought connectors and extra coax and everything. And had a little G5 RV hanging up between two trees and inverted V. He came in and said, here's how you do it. Just, you know, here's a maritime mobile station here. You know, had me listen to a couple things, made sure the radio worked. He went home and was my first contact. But then he said, hey, there's this event coming up next week you need to do. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm busy. And I, it, I'm not into this thing for contesting. About the set next day, I, I was working from home at the time. The radio was sitting there on my desk. I told Laura, I said, I'm going to take a break. I'm just going to make one contact and I'll be done with it. And it took me a few hours to get through. I don't, you know, two or three hours to make that first contact. I was really frustrated with it and uh, made it and, you know, wrote it down in the log book. Um, you know, here's a copy of the, if you want to see it, here's a copy of the log book you fill out. You can do it paper or electronic. Here's the certificates they'll send you. To get a certificate, you just have to make one station contact, any of the 13. I put it down for the rest of the day, got up the next morning and, uh, you can figure out what I had to do. I wanted one more. Then I turned it off and waited three or four hours and uh, the rest was history. I was hooked. Um, yeah, I can eat one lace potato chip, but I couldn't make one 13 colony contact. It hooked me. Uh, 2017, uh, K2K in New Hampshire, they had 12,838 contacts and it grew by over 3,000. GB13 COL, that's Great Britain. That's uh, phenomenal guys over in, in England that, that run that station. The Dadars Radio Club. 
they had 3,000 contacts. Uh, WM3 Penn is a bonus station in Pennsylvania. They had 8,000. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, roughly five or 6,000 people. You know, the, the last place was Massachusetts with 6,860 contacts. So there's several thousand people contacting all 13 stations and the bonuses. So if you contact all 13, it's called a clean sweep. You do not need the two bonus stations. Do I do this to get a sheet of paper with some pretty colors on it? Not at all. What got me hooked was, if that first time I did it, it had been real easy, I'd have put it down and been done with it. What motivates me is the, the challenge. It was the technical challenge of, can I contact these folks? And it was tough. It took me all week. And I don't think I got England, but what really hooked me, I never got GB13 COL that first year. My equipment and my skills were not good enough to contact them. And the band conditions were decent that year. This is four years ago. So I was hooked. Went through and did my lessons, learned. Now here's the logbook. Here's a tip for you. You can fill it out online and then print it and send it to them. You mail $5, that there's an address right at the bottom of the form. You, you mail it to them, $5, they'll mail you back the, the certificate. Several people over the last few years, I'm going through and people are asking me how I'm doing. I've got all 13. Well, I've got three, I've got to keep working. They'll get through right to the end and their computer will, power will go off or blip or their computer will have a hiccup, they'll lose their logbook. They didn't have a backup on paper. Do it on paper. I talked to uh, Greg Smith two years ago. Lost his, a guy in Dalton did as well. Um, that's the reward. This is one of Laura's where she got the clean sweep and the two bonus stations. And they color them in. Um, go back to the previous. They'll color the little stars in if you made contact with them. Over in the far right hand corner, the 13 with the blue circle around it, that means you got all 13 stations. Got the clean sweep. Got the, the British flag there at the bottom and then the Liberty Bell. So she got the two bonus stations as well. So the real reward for us, no certificate, it, it forced us to do lessons learned on our knowledge. So both of us got amateur extra that next year. Uh, it forced us to, to practice and practice listening and then practice calling into a pileup. So we could find other special event stations going on, like the Indy 500 I think is one we did. Uh, there was a couple of ships that were having special events. We'd try to call in and bust a pileup. And I realized that living where I live, I'm surrounded by mountains and there's an iron mine on my property right behind my antenna. Not necessarily ideal for amateur radio. So hanging a G5RV in a tree probably isn't gonna work for me. So we actually, the morning of the, when it opened, it opened up at nine o'clock in the morning, I think. And we were up at you know six that morning out working on the tower, trying to get the antenna up. And we got the antenna up in the air about an hour into the 13 colonies. And we started making contacts. We were going like gangbusters. We had tuned the antenna. I learned what an antenna tuner was and got one. Learned how to use it. Got amateur extra for both of us. So somebody operating in the band down low wasn't going to keep us from getting it. I learned what somebody working split meant. Split, it's kind of like working a repeater. You transmit on one frequency, listen on another one. When these guys work in these stations, they're good. When they get a big pile up, they'll go split because most people don't know what it is and they'll sit there and call on the same frequency the guy's listening. You know, he's transmitting on. So if you know how to operate split, as soon as they go split, you switch. You got an advantage. You don't need to worry about it. Um, we replaced our antenna twice. Put up a 60 foot tower, put up a trap beam the first year and then we got a hex beam because the tribe bander didn't do 40 meters. And they kept operating on 40 and I kept seeing people make contact and I couldn't. My 40 meters was still on a G5 RV so we took care of that. Power for me to bust a pile up living where I live even with a good antenna, I run a kilowatt of power now. We went and got an amplifier because of 13 colonies. 
I learned some new modes. I saw them making contact on PSK. They were doing it on CW, doing RTTY, and they did it on DSTART. England operated on DSTART. I didn't want to make my contact that way. I'm okay making it that way and HF, but knowing how to do it. How many different ways can I contact them? Then learn how to use some spotting tools. So the first year we didn't really plan, got the nudge, year two, 60 foot tower, kilowatt of power. Uh, we got all that second year, all 15 stations on the first day, and a lot of them on the first call. Year three, we got the hex beam, got it up, near vertical incident skywave antenna set up to get the ones in Georgia, Tennessee, and South Carolina. All bands on an antenna analyzer, they're all pretty good. And uh, I wanted the most advantage to break a pile up. So I was done the first day uh, within a few hours. This is an event that I'll take vacation for. Um, and I'll talk about it for months in advance. Uh, so year four, went and got the uh, certified trainer so I can help teach other people what they need to know to, to get hooked on whatever it is that hooks you, whether it's CW or FT8. I don't think FT8 is going to be allowed for the contacts here, but I love it as well. Whatever it is that hooks you, learn from it. Let it motivate you to learn and do something different. So it's not just about, this is what motivated me. These new skills can be used whenever needed for ARIES or whatever other needs there are. Uh, so we talked about enhancing our skills. Tuning an antenna. Shoot, you know, getting an antenna, but I was in and out of the house hundreds of times. You go out there and adjust it an inch at a time. And the, the tri-band beam I had, I'm adjusting, uh, let's see, two, four, six, uh, 12 different adjustments every time I taking a wrench out and adjusting 12 things every time I change the length of the elements. Hundreds of times, over and over. And that's what my SWR looked like. It was pretty good. Spotting tools, I learned how to use DX Watch. So there's several of them out there. I like DX Watch. The filter on it's pretty good. If you don't know what it is, it's where, if you make contact with somebody that you think is unique and of interest to somebody else, put your contact in there. Tell them who you are and, and where you're located, who you made contact with, just put the two call signs in, and then what frequency you did it on and what mode, so other people can see that and go look for it. Well, most of the, all 13 stations use the same first two characters. So I just put in a filter that I only want to see contacts being made for 13 colonies, and it'll show me right where they are, what modes they're operating on, what frequency, I can go straight to them and make a contact. Practiced with the equipment, got some better headphones. You're just listening to it through a speaker. It's tough to pull out some of the weak signals, especially if there's a big pile up. Uh, you know, getting a tuner that works well. Uh, learn how to use the radio, the preamp, the filters. Learn how to do split ops and do it quickly. Learn how to use the noise reduction. It's all important when you're trying to work a, a, a tough situation with pileup. The coax I had, getting the right length, getting a good quality coax where I'm not having line loss. Uh, the antenna location and the shape and configuration, just playing with it and, and figuring out how to do it. I practiced contacting stations that were in these 13 states and in England, just trying to figure out if, did I have my setup working? The, the folks at GB13COL have a Facebook page, they're really neat guys. They set up ahead of time they're wanting to test, so I called them on their Facebook page going, hey, we're on this frequency, need to test somebody on the east coast of the U.S. Here I am. Can I talk to you or not? And PSK Reporter, how many of you have seen that before? So if you're using FT8 or PSK, uh, Throw your call sign out five or six times, go to PSK Reporter, put your call sign at the top. All those little balloons are people that are monitoring those digital modes. And if they're running uh, like FL Digi, whenever they hear a signal and get your call sign, it's reporting back into this, showing that they heard you. 
So you working with your antenna, go throw your call sign out there eight or ten times. Come back and look and see where you reached. Did you get to England or not? Did you cover all the U.S. or just part of it? Go change some things, do it again. You can set the, uh, the time. You only want to see things that happen the, the last eight hours. I only want to see things that happen in the last 15 minutes. And each of the balloons, if they've seen your signal, will tell you how many minutes ago they last heard you. And if you hold your mouse over it, it'll tell you what kind of antenna they have. You know, what bands and modes are allowed? They're using all the bands. I don't think they're using 60. Not using 60. They used, I already said it earlier, single sideband voice is the, the most rewarding to me. CW, PSK, RTTY. I started, you know, made contact with all of them voice in the first couple of hours, started going back and Okay, now I want to get them all in PSK. I want to get them all in uh, RTTY. And then the split operations we talked about. How quickly, consistently, and proficiently can you do 12 things at a time? And that, when I, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what all I'm doing, I'm spotting, I'm changing frequency, I'm changing mode, I'm turning a rotor, working a tuner, I'm logging. I'm listening to a faint signal in a pileup, and I'm making adjustments to the radio filter, and I'm calling, and am, am I transmitting on the right frequency within my band plan? Now, am I on the right antenna? So the hex beam I've got now has three feeds, so I've got a, another device I turn to go between feed one, two, and three. And the challenge for most operators is getting over to England. You know, the, the band conditions haven't been great. If 13 colonies doesn't float your boat, there's worked all states. There's the DX World Award, DXCC, the grid square Felton talked about. There's Ole Miss networks that, that uh, if you're trying to do worked all states, they're just set up for that. They run every day on 20 meters and 40 meters, and they run extra ones on weekends. So if whatever it is that that makes you motivated to do it, find it, let it motivate you to learn more, and uh, I hope 13 Colonies does for you what it did for me, because uh, I look forward to it every year. Yeah, I'm doing the work all states. I, I've got a, a mountain right behind me. It kind of blocks, blocks me there where the, the red states are. I haven't put a lot of time into it. Uh, you know, most of us check into Aries Tuesday nights. You know, here's all different. They're sky worn. We do our weather nets. Uh, soda National Parks on the air. There's contests every day. There's Rag Choose 1010 Network, the expeditions. There's special events for the Indy 500 and the other two races, like the NASCAR race, and there's the third one. If you do all three, they'll send you a certificate. Just whatever you have an interest in, find it, 